after a wonderful Christmas at my brother's place. We are all packed up and ready to go exploring again. Look at us, ready to roll. Good to remember how to pack it up. Well, after a ripper Christmas New Year with the family in Tassie, we have moved on and are camping at Garden Island, Clarence Head. Point. Point. Oh, God damn it. I knew I'd get it wrong because she's been telling me this whole time. I've been telling him it's Garden Island and Clarence Point. He actually repeated it three times. <laughs> Right, as I was saying, we are at Garden Island, Clarence Point. I've been telling my wife that the whole time. <laughs> She's been telling me. But it's a beautiful little free camp. Check it out. Keep it on me. Okay, more like this. Check it out. Great little spot. Not a lot of trees. Uh, it does get windy, but wow, that's part of camping. We're loving it because the sun's shining in Tassie and it has been much worse weather. So we're gonna sit here and watch some boats come in. We were saying how many boats are gonna come in today? How many are we gonna see? Hopefully we see at least one, which I reckon there's one out there. Maybe some more, but we're gonna enjoy the afternoon of relax, free camp, Garden Island, Clarence Point. Put it down. So, Garden Island, Clarence Point, put it on your list. Free, great spot. Check out the ships coming in. You can do some fishing, watch some fishing boats. And we're loving it. Loving life. How good is it? We are sitting back, just had lunch, and we're gonna watch this big boy come past. I think his V8's a little bit bigger than mine though. I think, uh, I think my little honey over here is probably a bit jealous of this big fella's uh, V8. is hoping that I can actually capture a nice sunset today in Tasmania. I haven't been able to capture a good sunset the whole time we've been here and we have been here over a month now. So we're looking good, it's right out there, not a huge amount of clouds. So let's see how we go, I'll put the time warp on. And once again my sunset is gone, look at it. Look at it, clouds come in, take away my sunset, rude, Tasmania, I want a sunset. Okay, we have left Garden Island and we're heading to the berry patch. Now a lot of people stay at the berry patch when they first get off the ferry, but we went to Launceston, so it looks like a nice spot and there's the berry farm right near it, which is even better. So we're headed that way today. Checked out Turner's Beach. It was actually a very lovely beach and there's Caravan Park right there. But one thing I wanted to say that we have noticed, Tasmania uses their logging tracks. Now, every so often we come across uh, what you call a sea road and it's uh, always gravel but they're logging tracks, but they've actually used them as like a main connecting road to another centre. So this is the one we're on now. Yeah, forestry or roads and that, they're actually pretty good. Yeah. Quite smooth, a little bit of corrugation on some we've encountered, but so far, you know, these main ones have actually been really good. And like these ones are, are well used, like we just passed several cars, so they're not just a random track Google sent us down. They're obviously tracks that people use a lot because there's only so many certain main roads and yeah. That's right, They did. there is a sign that did warn us that there could be logging trucks on here so we're just taking it easy. 
just poking along, doing 55 at the moment. But probably better than some of the roads in New South Wales at the moment, I would say. <laughs> Yeah, take back everything I just said about their roads. Holy fuck! We just went up a mile, but not only that, it was as corrugated as all crap. And Kane's always said to me, it's okay, like second gear, we'll just crawl up. No, no, we jump back to first it's gear. It's so bloody corrugated, we're just bouncing like a son of a bitch. Oh, yeah, okay. I don't know if I like these roads anymore, Tasmania. Good news is we got to come down it. <laughs> yeah, maybe going an extra 20 minutes around might have been better. Well, it was an interesting uh, little drive from our camp last night at Garden Island across to the berry patch at uh, Turner's Beach, I think it is. Um, $10 a night. We've got two nights here because we want to check out Davenport, probably check out the penguins tonight and just have a bit of a look around before we hit a Sunday sesh with uh, Lifestyle Pioneers out at a uh, little farm stay there at, which looks awesome. Uh, this is us in the background. Check it out. We uh, just went for a bit of a wander yonder down to uh, Turner's Beach. And just on the way there, we found that. How good, if you were a family, back when we were camping, we wouldn't have got past here with our two boys because they would have spent their whole time here. Trucks, they love trucks. And they're just trucks there to play with. Trucks. So, well done to whoever left all the trucks there. afternoon free and what do we choose to do with it we go looking for glass on the beach this beach is full of rocks not glass what do you reckon Kane oh we find some rocks yeah I like the glass because they're yeah. pretty colors no. and they're cool and smooth note to self when find pretty rock with stripes on it don't lick it off the beach because it's very salty <laughs> look at Kane It'll taste nice. Lick it. Come on. <laughs> not licking it. Why not? Yeah, <laughs> because it's salty. <laughs> Good for your salt intake. Hey Kay, here's our 101 tips for when glass hunting on the beach. Number one, open your eyes. You're not going to see anything when they're closed. Number two, it depends which way your shadow is, because if you're walking and your shadow is in front of you, it's a whole lot harder to see the glass. So if you're walking with the shadow behind you, much better. Uh, do we have a tip three, Kane? Mm. <laughs> we'll come back to you later with tip number three. We are at Button Beach in Ulverstone and we walk along the beach looking for glass. We so didn't it, take the GoPro this time because we no. didn't think we'd see anything. No, so another good reason to get glass is have a look at all this U-Butte glass. Lovely, we get some nice little pieces in there. Yeah, look at, this is my favourite. I found that yeah. right at the end. Oh, well, now now dropping. we're dropping glass everywhere. But another reason we collect the glass is that's what you find on the beach, so we're cleaning up the beach too. Yeah, that's all just that's right. broken glass that hasn't gone. You won't it's not hear beach. that. That's all broken glass that we find on the beach. So people are playing, running all on the beach, and there's all this glass on there. So, you know, one way we're picking it up for us, getting some good things, and we're also helping the uh, people, the environment and everything, getting the glass off the beach. So what's the difference between the two? One's been rolled over by all the rocks and that in the ocean, so it's got rounded corners and doesn't cut you, and it actually looks kind of nice. Hold it up a bit, I can't see it. Yeah, so it looks quite good and nice. It's a bit yep. beaten. It's good in jars, whereas the other stuff is uh, sharp and can cut you and yes. yeah, that sort of stuff. 
So we're at Lilico Beach, going to check out some little penguins tonight. Hopefully a few come in. They said there was about a hundred last night and uh, we can photography these fellas. Obviously you can't use flashes and all that stuff. Um, much more relaxed, relaxed atmosphere than uh, Phillip Island. And yeah, we're confident we're going to see a couple of penguins. Beautiful evening. It's an absolute ripper evening. So yeah, hopefully we're in for a real treat. Because there's a baby down there. There is a baby, it's pretty cool. There is well, it's a big baby, it's, it's not little. Oh, yeah, it's like a full size bloody penguin. Yeah, I reckon it, mm. it's getting ready to go. Yeah. But good news is it's right at the top of the hill, so it's going to come out and barrel every single penguin that comes up here. Which is pretty fun yeah, to watch. Which is awesome to watch. It's all about the sport of tackling the incorrect <laughs> parent <laughs> to get food. <laughs> It run down the beach and in it's gone. Oh, there he is. Oh, which is like a, a native water rat. Oh, okay. Uh, they found all down the east coast. Um, and they love, um, they really love like the, the sea, shellfish and things. So they're, they're out on the rocks. You're baby then! If you want to see penguins up close and personal, you need to come to Lilico. It is free to come and see them. They do have a donation box. But another way to keep your camping cheap, find these free events. And look, we are so close to these penguins. Absolutely recommend it. So we've spent a nice little day just relaxing around Penguin, just to walk along the beach, had lunch there at the cafe, which was awesome. And now we've sort of just driving along the coast road between Penguin and Ulverston. And how often, to be honest, I've never actually seen a railway line right along the coast. Nice scenic drive along the coast, railway line. And we are at the Three Sisters Goats Nature Reserve. Just checking out some of the rocks. I just walked across the railway line because I'm naughty. And uh, yeah, check out uh, the low tide views of the coastline on the north here. Pretty specky. Rightio, my good peoples. We were cooking the other day on our gas cooktop, which we love. Absolutely love this gas cooktop. But if it's windy, it's a pile of shit, so it's really hard to cook when it's windy because it just keeps blowing the flame away yes. and took us forever to cook I our dinner the other night. It took, took over an hour, probably nearly an hour and a half for the veggies to boil and then the sausages didn't really fry as No, we, we just really couldn't get them hot enough. They'd sizzle and then the wind would blow and we tried to surround it and everything. But, you know, these things happen when it's windy, so we bit the bullet and we have purchased a induction cooktop a june it is from uh anaconda i think it cost us 70 dollars on 70 dollars on special so to be honest the power we used with the gas or the amount of gas we used to try and cook dinner we would have saved in buying this thing here I reckon so it, you know it will actually save us in gas on windy days so. yeah now now look we don't have the huge um battery bank and solar system and all that that uh, can keep it going because it's only a small hybrid van, so 200 lithium, oh, 200 amp hours of lithium, and a 300 watts of solar with uh, external inputs I can put in as well. So probably another 250 if I really wanted to. But if we cook during the day, or while we've still got sun on this, even if it's windy, we can cook dinner, home and hose, work like a treat, and yeah. Like it'll... personally, even if we have to on a yucky weather turn the jenny on for half an hour to cook tea 
I think we'll save money. Yes, it's not so much saving money. It's just we'll have tea. Actually, we'll have tea at a decent <laughs> That's time. That's right, rather than huddling around to try and keep the gas going. So we do have a microwave. We can reheat stuff, but it's just the other night we just left where we were going. We had to cook something because we didn't have anything, and the wind was just howling, and yeah, it was just difficult for us. So induction cooker works a treat. Pan's still hot because. Uh, I've been uh, trialing it out, but it boils water really quickly. So you, you do need induction um, pots and pans when you use it. So ones that can handle that, not your aluminium ones. All ours are like that anyway. So where'd you get our pans from? Kat? We got our pans from I'm not sure BCF. BCF. We just got there's uh, I think it was three pots. We left one at home, and then we got another pack which had two fry pans. We left one of those at home because we didn't need it. But yeah, they cook on anything, gas, that's, induction, that's electric. Right. So that's the cool. only thing you need to check if you do that. But look, I know a lot of people have got induction. They'll tell us we're idiots for not having it. Um, like I said, I love our gas cooking because when it is not windy, it's nice, uh, quick, convenient. We've got a four cooker so we can cook a fair bit on it. The induction's only a single cooker, but it's going to uh, be a game changer for when it's windy for us oh, and we really struggle. So It's going to be awesome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it will be a... a Gun of a thing to use in the wind. Now, Kane, okay. do you want to show everyone what we have when you camp at the berry patch? We have. We have berries, cheese, and bickies for afternoon tea or early tea. <laughs> <laughs> tea. Look, we're not the general campers because uh, we do tend to stay up a little late. We tend to sleep in because it's a great lifestyle. We don't need to get out of bed early. So our breakfasts are pushed back a bit. Lunch then gets pushed back a bit. And afternoon tea is, what time is it? It's about, yeah, it's at 6.30. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a nice time for afternoon tea, but Daylight saving, the sun's still well up in the sky, so yeah, we utilise all our daylight. So we left the berry patch this morning, great little campsite, $10 a night, and we have come to the Gnomen Farm stay, I think it is, or Gnomen, um, don't ask me how to spell it, silent G or N, not really sure, but it's an awesome little campsite here, he's opening up some camping, um, big barn in the background, so they're having a summer festival today, which will be awesome. Uh, Wolf Brothers actually playing here next weekend, so we've got to come back for that, because it's a big country music festival. Check it out. And these legends here, Simon and Liz from Lifestyle Pioneers are off in the background. They sort of invited uh, everyone to a Sunday sesh, so we thought we'd come along, say good day again. Uh, met them before on our travels and uh, it'd be great to uh, hang out with them too. Nobody wants someone who's naughty. Eating all my strawberries. If you look hard enough, you can see ocean views. Uh, 
just doing a recce trip of the Gnome and Farm. Yeah, and then we're going to come back next week because guess who's here next week? They're playing a country music festival. Wolf Brothers. <laughs> Righty, we are at the Mount Gnome and Farm, staying the night. I'm looking down a bit because uh, the grass is just a touch long. And Kane has a habit of stepping on stuff. <laughs> I'm not the uh, best known for not stepping on snakes. So uh, we're walking down to have a look for some, what do you call them? Highland cattle? Highland cows. Highland cows. cows. Hairy cows. Yeah, so, you know, awesome little farm stay. We checked out some pigs. Um, good friends of ours, or we met traveling, Liz and Simon. They uh, invited us here. We're happy we come. We met another awesome couple, Dennis and Julie. Julie! They're an Irish couple and I love the Irish accent. It is absolutely awesome. And uh So here yeah, we came, we had the picnic, summer picnic yep, there the... today. Which was awesome. Um, great food, some nice music, and some drinks. We checked out their local cider here. But uh the benefit, what are you doing? Oh, I could have stood in some poo. Oh. <laughs> the, the benefit of coming here, I reckon, was that we found out that the Wolf Brothers, who have you got that on? Well, why are you walking so far away well, from oh, me? You're turning, I was going that way. That's long grass. Okay, sorry, get back to that. The benefit of coming here, other than we get to catch up with all these guys, was that we found out that the Wolf Brothers are gonna be here next week. So guess who's coming back to watch the Wolf Brothers? Huh. Number one country music fan. That would be us. So yeah, loving this farm stay. 20 bucks a night's actually pretty good for what we get. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we're really enjoying it. Now we're just gonna go and look for some of these uh, hairy cows. Highland cows, but hairy cows. We actually can get to see the ocean in the background too, so check out. Oh yeah, that's them there. Can you see? Hey. <laughs> you're a big boy. Me? I don't know if you're his. I know you're a big boy. Holy shit, you're big. I don't think you're the right one, though. Hmm? Yeah, I'm going to follow the fence. It's got a path along the fence. Hello, buddy. You're a big boy. Big boy. Well, I came looking for hairy cows. There's definitely a big bull just behind me. It's hard to see because there's a little laneway between us and the other fence. He's been a very noisy boy too with his uh, carrying on. I think he's talking all the other bulls all around the place. But uh, he's definitely a big boy. Loved coming down here and seeing him. Now I'm going to have to walk back through this long grass, back up the hill, and uh, hopefully not stand on any bloody snakes. If I got every word perfectly weighted on a thin piece of paper, would it make any difference? Would it change for the better if I wrote you a poem, if I posted a letter? Well, the sun is setting in the background. We've been in Tassie for, ooh, how long have we been in Tassie? Month and a half. Oh yeah, and we've seen very few sunsets. So having one nice clear sky like this is uh, pretty uh, specky for us. Check it out. Is it me?
It was a great night's sleep here at uh, Mount Noman Farm. We had a really good uh, evening sit around the fire with uh, Liz and Simon from Lifestyle Pioneers and Dennis and Julie, great Irish couple. Not very uh, on the socials, but yeah, awesome guys to hang out with, with some ripper stories. And we're gonna head off today, probably to, oh, I'm not sure, Stanley Way. We'll just see how we go, where we get to. We'll be back next weekend, obviously, for a uh, country music concert festival party. Well, Mount Noman Farm, we just did a little tour and it gets the thumbs up approval. Yeah, Tw that's pretty cool. That's right, 20 bucks a night. It's an awesome little spot to camp out the back. We had some great company and yeah, loving it. Yeah, farm life. The dogs came, slipped under one of the caravans. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah sheep, there's pigs, there's a veggie garden. And Guy the owner is pretty awesome. He Come is down for a chat, so. super great. Well, North Tassie is the place for low cost and cheap activities. Tell you, we can't wait to head to Northwest Tassie and see what else we can explore. Come next week and check out our adventures. Nice jump, okay. Thank you. Where's your jumper? Uh, it uh, didn't, didn't bring it. I was a dum dum. You are a dum dum. It looks like your thing's dirty. Your lens. Do you want me to clean your lens? Oh, look at that. <laughs> that's like crystal clear. That's, that's like HD. <laughs> Maybe Ken needs to clean his lens a little bit more. Do I want you in the spinner? Yes, you do, because okay. it's focused on me and it looks awesome! <laughs>